Hey, this is Doug Field, uh, along with my host, uh, Amy Otto and Jonathan Field. And welcome back to the segment, Healthcare Consumers and Radio. And uh, we have joining us today Tom Grant, who's Senior Executive with Select Quote Benefit Solutions. Tom, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? We're, we're good. Good, uh, good to have you on the program. Um, Thank you. You have a very unique position in this space, uh, and I'm, we're excited to learn more about how you see this and how you see the private exchange market evolving. But uh, give our audience a, a background or on uh, Select Quote uh, Benefit Solutions, please. Sure, absolutely. Um, Select Quote was started back in uh, the mid-1980s, really the first private insurance exchange founded in the United States. Uh, back in the late 1980s, the founder of the company, a gentleman named Sharon Singh, went to the life insurance company and uh, developed the idea of uh, selling life insurance really telephonically where um, he, he went to, gosh, maybe a dozen different carriers and uh, came up with the idea of really selling level premium term insurance mm-hmm. using a quote engine and comparing the different rates and underwriting classifications and really did it on the principle that uh, the individual on the end of the phone, uh, the agent was commission agnostic and was always trying to uh, get the best deal for the consumer. So the agent was paid a service fee and really had no idea what the commission structure was with the, with the company. And we've expanded since then into different verticals in the uh, home and auto business, um, and in the um, Medicare exchange business, we're really we'll sell through the exchanges now. We have about 800 employees currently, and uh, about 200,000 policy owners will will operate through the exchange. Very interesting. How do you see um, the private exchange market, private healthcare exchange market, health and benefits market uh, going forward over the next few years? Well, obviously, it wasn't a Terribly smooth rollout with the <laughs> state exchanges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I'd be a little kind, but there was a few uh, glitches along the way with the state and the federal exchange. Uh, it's certainly a very ambitious project. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think that it's obviously going to happen. Uh, the, the progress has been much slower than they would like to have uh, seen it, but. Um, I think certainly for uh, the consumers, as they get more used and accustomed to buying their individual health insurance through the state or federal exchange or other private health insurance exchanges, it's very beneficial for for our business um, because the consumer gets you know accustomed to buying their insurance products because a lot of times the consumers don't really differentiate one insurance product from the other. Oh, you know, gosh, I should buy my insurance. Well. I'll, I'll just do that telephonically, pick up the phone and, and uh, access an exchange. So we think uh, long-term that's a very positive development for uh, for our company. Does it allow for um, several plans to be compared side-by-side? Side? I mean, walk us a little bit more through how the tool works. Yeah, so basically um, in the Medicare world, for example, that's a, a great product to compare side-by-side side because um, – Blue Cross could have a, a Plan F with a MedSup, um, certainly Mutual Omaha or Cigna, the other major players, or ARP. But really, a Plan F is a Plan F. They're, they're all exactly the same, with the one uh, very important difference that there's a um, um, difference in pricing. So the actuaries will price a Plan F in a specific uh, zip code or uh, area code based on the morbidity of the experience there, and they might, for whatever reason, decide not to be all that competitive in uh, 66208. Um, but most consumers really have, they're, they're really struggling to find out or, or understand what the difference between Medicare Supplement and Medicare Advantage, let alone that there's a huge mm-hmm. or significant pricing difference between uh, one Medicare Supplement and the other. So what we'll do is we, we're, our, all of our um, agents are licensed in all 50 states. So when we're dealing with an individual in uh, North Carolina, wherever it might be, we will fire up the quote engine, and then we see who has the most, uh, the most competitive plan. And as I mentioned, uh, a plan F is a, is a plan F on the Medicare supplement side. Lots more uh, to it on the Medicare Advantage plans that are very similar to what the 
um, the network plans are like on the employer side, um, and uh, lots of information to go over in terms of the pharmacy component on that. But still, um, when you're looking at the various plans and uh, trying to figure out which is the right one for you, uh, our people will take you through it in a very uh, agnostic style. And so much of our our interface with the consumer, whether it's a, a retiree where the plan has been terminated or they're, or they're offering a commercial plan as an option to the, to the re- retiree plan that's available, um, is educating the consumer about what's out there. What, what is out there that's available for me as a retiree. And I, I can't emphasize how important that is to a retiree because um, really for someone who's post-65, uh, the leading cause of bankruptcy is, is a health care mm-hmm. reason. So rightfully so, an individual is enormously concerned about what's the right plan for me? What should I, what should I purchase? And uh, educating them in terms of what... The Medicare supplement plans are all about edu- educating those individuals on the Part D's, educating them on the Medicare Advantage plans that are available. Uh, that, that's a big part of the interview that we have with the with the client. So, average duration of those calls typically is about almost 50 minutes. So, it's uh, it's a typically a long uh, interview that we take the individual through and uh, present the various options to them. Now, now, Tom, do you work directly with the employers uh, on these options? Yeah, so we do. Um, we market directly to consumers, and then we market on a B2B basis where we'll call on employers that are either pro- trying to provide some um, steerage to a commercial plan where um, their their rates are not that competitive um, and uh, they're – partnering with us to where, where we will provide uh, seminars, meetings, and whatnot to the retirees to educate them about, well, these are the new changes that are taking place in your own existing retiree program uh, where there's a rate increase, there's a uh, change in the, in the pharmacy payout, whatnot. Uh, but these are the plans that are available on the commercial sector, and you can, you can see a lot of times that the rates are, are far less. Or you'll have a plan termination where a large employer – uh, for example, AT&T has, I think, about 350,000 individuals in their retirement plan. They're terminating the plan uh, next year and then um, making the exchange available to the uh, retirees where a subsidy is paid to the retirees. It will vary with how many years they've been with the company, and uh, then they'll use that subsidy or a portion of the subsidy to uh, purchase the the Medicare plan, whether it's a uh, a med sub or a Medicare Advantage. Most of the time, if there's a significant subsidy that's involved, I'd say 70% of the individuals in a retirement plan will will pick a Medicare supplement plan. Um, but it, it it varies in terms of the structure. And then some of the companies will terminate the plans and provide really uh, no subsidy uh, whatsoever. Um, it just varies from uh, company to company. And it's a business right now in terms of looking at the post-65 re- retiree the benefits that are out there. Obviously, it's the older companies that have been in business a long time, whether it's the um, big pharmaceutical companies, oil and mm-hmm. gas companies, uh, companies in the utilities business that still provide a post-65 retirement plan. Um, a lot of those plans uh, have been uh, terminated. The, the companies have to post a a large liability on the books, um, and they've changed the tax laws and the pharmacy um, benefits, so it's not as advantageous to the to the companies. And quite frankly, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of those plans are priced pretty high. So um, when they terminate the plans, they provide a subsidy. A lot of the retirees don't realize it at the time, but it's it's a much better uh, deal for the retirees going forward. In the public sector, the states. Uh, you, you can go to a website and see what the um, – it's usually typically side-by-side side where you see the unfunded pension liability. Well, right next to that, you'll see the unfunded health care retiree for the various states around the country. Um, only three states, I believe, have terminated their post-65 coverage. Uh, but I think um, that um, will be a growing market where um, you'll see more and more – States, municipalities, really 
uh, terminate those plans, provide a subsidy to retirees, and provide an educational resource uh, like ourselves to educate the retirees on the choices that are available to them. Well, you seem and to usually, be... typically, they'll, they'll provide a time frame of uh, three to four months uh, while, while before they terminate the plan and the um, individual retirees can call in and talk to the counselors. Hey, Tom, uh, uh, we've got about a minute to go on this program. Very interesting, and I appreciate your time. Uh, leave, our sure. audience, leave our audience with one or two takeaways you'd like to share with them, please. I think, you know, the important takeaways are Medicare is very confusing, um, it, but it's incredibly important to understand the different products that are out there, uh, to understand uh, what a Medicare supplement plan is, what it isn't, um, and to understand the complexities of a Medicare Advantage plan. And I would emphasize that really uh, nobody really in the marketplace should be out there just with the basic Medicare coverage. That They all should, at, at least um, with how competitively priced these products are, have a Medicare Advantage contract. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy your weekend thank out you. there, and I appreciate having you on the program. And, Amy, thank you for being our guest host today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's been fun. And to our audience, uh, we'll see you next week on Healthcare Consumers Radio.